David, how are you doing today? Hey, Dustin, I'm doing well. And there you are in Mankato. You know, I've been to Mankato. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, I know you spent some time in Gustavus. Uh, it's a small world. I taught there for a year, yep, and some of my best friends of my whole life I made there. Um, I, I taught there from 66 to 67, and uh, one of my best friends, Carl Franzine, is a singer-songwriter who performs in Mankato and has for the last, I mean, he's there like three nights a week uh, at various coffee shops and stuff. So look for Carl Franzine, all you guys. Uh, <laughs> he's a great, great singer-songwriter. But yeah, I love. I've been been to this, been to Minneapolis many many times. Been to Mankato, and it's a terrific area. Lovely. Well, David, it's uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, interesting. You came from uh, this neck of the woods and uh, made it out to uh, to Hollywood, and I know you got a lot of stuff going on now. I wanted to ask you first about uh, your new movie coming up, Swallow. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, it's um, it's an independent film, and it's kind of two things. It's about this, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this uh, condition called pica. It's where m- mainly women, I think, eat odd things like starch and sometimes clay and things like that. And this is, it takes that condition and uh, sort of investigates it. It's about this young woman who marries into a rich family, and she's a little off ba- a little off-center uh, during the days. Her husband is a very type A guy, goes off and works, and she's left alone. And she just, I don't know why, but she, like, sees a marble and uh, swallows it. <laughs> and she starts eating things like pins and uh, dangerous things. And, you know, the whole story develops. So it's, it starts off as kind of an, you know, odd condition movie. But the ending, which I won't tell you, is uh, a very, very touching, very um, um, harsh psychological ending to the whole thing um it's i don't know when it's going to come out i I think it's going to be quite interesting so look for it very good yeah it sounds awesome i know david you've been in a lot of uh, (laughs) tv shows as of late too we've seen you in veep and uh, malibu dan Uh, you've been pretty busy here the last few years i have been i've been very very fortunate as you know most of life is luck at least that's what i think (laughs) <laughs> and why we're lucky, or I don't know why. I don't know why that all happens, but let's not get into that. Um, <laughs> yes, and I have the most recent is Malibu Dan, which I shot earlier in the year. And this is all um, created by this guy, David A.R. White, who came up with the idea, and uh, I think he's the producer, and I don't know if the head writer, but he's instrumental in the whole thing. And it's, I think it, it, and I think it's a successful attempt to kind of uh, revisit those uh, um, family sitcoms that we love so much in the '60s, '70s, and '80s. Um, you know, he plays this guy Dan Malibu lives in Malibu, and he has a family. And every week, there's some kind of crisis uh, hits the family, just like Father Knows Best, or, or uh, you know, Life of Riley, or you know, that's a really old one. Um, and, you know, it's funny. It's very well written. Cast is great. And uh, I was uh, grateful to him. He, he was a big uh, fan of uh, Sledgehammer, this show that I did many years ago. Sure. And um, he's blonde and I'm blonde. So I think he um, thought that I would be good for his father. So then uh, they asked me with, if I would, you know, would want to work with Cheryl Ladd, you know, and I said, of course, no. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, Charlie's Angels, what are you kidding me? And uh, so we play his parents, Dan's parents, and we are having mar- marital difficulties. And Dan very cleverly uh, engineers uh, the reconciliation. So that's that's the kind of thing that it is. And uh, I think it's a sweet, really sweet, funny, dear show. And I hope people watch it. Excellent, yeah. And you mentioned uh, beloved shows. Of course, uh, a lot of people still love you from uh, Sledgehammer and my co-host, uh, Justin, in fact, uh, I think you could consider him a hammerhead. He was pretty bummed he couldn't make it today. Oh, we'll give him my very, very best. That's nice to hear. Well, David, did you think, I mean, all these years later, people would still be uh, talking about Sledgehammer? I mean, it seemed kind of like an odd concept maybe on paper, but uh, a lot of people love that show still to this day. You know, it's, it's actually, it's, I think, become more popular than it was when it was first on. 
when it was first on in 1986, there were 60 shows on te- or 61 shows on television, as opposed to 460. Now there were 60, and we were uh, 61, and we were number 60. And the only show below, uh, below us was uh, Tracy Ullman. Um, so we lasted two years. Um, and, uh, it was definitely a cult show, you know, but, but I tell you what it really was. It was not unlike Malibu Dan. It was a real family show because, um, often I talk, people say hello, pull me aside and say, this was a show, Sledgehammer, that I, that I, my dad and I always watched. So it was a real sort of bonding show for dads and kids. I've heard that countless times, um, but no, when we did it, we you know who knew, and then it kind of disappeared. Uh, and then I found out that it be, became hugely popular around the world. It was much more popular in uh, Ireland, and England, and Germany, and South America. I have guys, you know, park my car and they go, "Oh no, you, you know, where are you from? Argentina, Nicaragua." Uh, so it was a big, big hit around the world. But uh, I guess the U.S. just wasn't ready. And uh, now, in these days of cable, um, it's much more available, and uh, it's making a resurgence. So, you know, who knows, right? Life is funny. Yeah, I first uh, remember seeing you uh, hanging out with Brigitte Nielsen in uh, Cobra. So, I mean, there's <laughs> you never know, as you said. Oh, good God. Yeah, <laughs> I was what you call an innocent bystander in that thing. I got killed very early. But, yeah, that was interesting. I met... Uh, Sylvester Stallone, who's not a big guy, by the way. I guess you knew that. He's like, I don't know, 5'7". I'm six feet. He's like 5'7". He's like five inches shorter. <laughs> I mean, proportionally, when you look at him on the screen, you know, he looks like so, this monster. Uh, and, of course, there's not an ounce of fat on him. But he's not. A, he was not a big guy. She was a big girl. <laughs> She's a, 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 a very uh, tall, statuesque uh, Bridget. Yeah, I got shot early. <laughs> And again, uh, David, looking forward to uh, seeing Swallow and um, Malibu Dan is out and everything else you got coming up. Thank you so much for your time today. Ple- always a pleasure to talk to somebody from Minnesota. <laughs> All right, maybe I'll see you around town one of these days. That'd be great, sure. Yep, could happen. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. Bye-bye. Thanks.